What's up, guys? So let's jump into this UFC 300 prediction video. Yeah. So for those who haven't already followed my channel and subscribed, please do so now. Right here. Oh, no, no, I'm serious. Wait, go ahead and click it. We'll jump into the video right after you click it. Awesome. You did it. You're a broski. Let's jump into it. All right. So I have a group of friends that I watch UFC with. By the way, do you have a group of friends you watch UFC with? Let's see who has the biggest group of people that watches UFC together. I mean, yeah, sometimes I have to watch it alone. But on the big cards, we usually get together and throw a little party. So what's the biggest group you've ever watched UFC with and not counting like a bar or like a restaurant or something like that. I mean, like getting with your buddies and watching UFC, put it in the comments. All right. UFC 300 featuring Pereira versus Hill. I'm excited about this card. I know we, we all discussed like being disappointed that it wasn't like a bigger sensational headliner. We're expecting like, I don't know what we're expecting, honestly, with how much Dana was hyping it. I feel like we were expecting like Satan versus Jesus or something like that. Or uh, Elon Musk versus Mark Zuckerberg. That's, that's was were we expecting that? That would have been awesome. Awesome. Missed opportunity. It would have been so awesome. So dang, right. Bang, right out of the gate. Figueroa versus Garbrandt. Holy cow. Oh, they have Figueroa is a big favorite. He's 340 favorite. Man, I don't know. That's a hard one. Okay, I'm going to go with Garbrandt. I, I think that maybe a miracle will happen on that one. I mean... He doesn't need a miracle. He's good. But what I mean by a miracle is he's a big underdog. And most people are going to lean toward who the favorite is, obviously. But I think Cody might do something crazy and get it done. And I think it might be exciting. Just kind of rooting for the underdog on that one. Bobby Green and Jim Miller. They got Bobby Green as the favorite. At two minus two oh five, and uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and go with Bobby Green. Next, we got Andrade versus Marina Rodriguez, and wow, they got them even. They're both one ten favorites, so they believe it'll go either way. Hmm, I'm gonna go with Andrade. Hmm. I feel like I might have got that one wrong, but I'll stick with it. Andrade. And then headlining the early prelims is Jalen Turner versus Makano. And they don't have stats up for, um, you know, the underdog or the favorite on that. Hmm. That's interesting. I will go with, that's a hard one. I'm going to go with Makano only because I've seen him fight someone of, I can't remember the, his name, but he fought someone uh, like Jalen Turner's size and kind of fight style. And he was able to handle him. So I'm just going to go with Makana. We got opening the prelims is Yusuf versus Diego Lopez. And they have Diego Lopez is the favorite. And I'll be honest, I'm not super familiar with Diego Lopez. I'll have to go back and look at some of his stuff. And so just off of what I know right now, I would have to say, this is really hard. I'm just going to go with Diego Lopez just because he's the favorite. And I feel like they may know something I don't know. Dang, Kayla don't get a face. Kayla Harrison don't get a face. What's that all about? Oh, and they don't have the odds on here either. Holly Holm versus Kayla Harrison. I'm definitely going to go with Kayla Harrison. Just because the UFC, I think, has, like, they see something in her. And usually when they do something like this and put them a little higher up on, on the card, it's someone that they want us to know about. So 
she would probably be a good bet. Calvin Guitar versus Aljamain Sterling in the prelims. This is wild. Mid prelims, too. And they have Guitar as the favorite. No, I'm going to pick Sterling. I'm going to pick Sterling. Oh, they, that's weird. They're both minus. So they're like, they're both favorites, but Calvin Guitar is a little more of a favorite. Yeah, okay. That's weird. I really don't understand what they mean by that. Oh, I think I do. It's, it's because the payout. They, they're they not so confident in the payout. So they make them both minuses. So it's less of a payout in, when you bet on them. I get what they're doing there. And then headlighting the prelims is Yuri Prochaska and Alexander Rakic. And they have Rakic as the favorite. Wow. Interesting. Alexander Rakic is 14 and three. His last fight was with Jan and he lost via TKO. So he got knocked out by Jan. And then his fight before that, he won against Diego Santos. And before that, he won against Anthony Smith. And then before that, he lost to Vulcan Ozdemir. Prochaska is 29 and 4. 29 and 4 versus 14 and 3. I'm going with 29 and 4. Prochaska for sure. Now, opening the main event is Bo Nickel versus Cody Brundage. Now, I wanted to make a video on this, but I didn't. Maybe I'll still be able to. I don't know. I feel like it's a little late in, late in the game unless I do it tomorrow or something. But Bo Nickel versus Cody Brundage. I don't think, I really don't think they're trying to challenge Bo Nickel on this. I think that they're just kind of patting him up the best they can. For the betting odds to be this far off, that should tell you something. Especially since how they have plenty of fighters to put Bo Nickel against. They don't have Bo Nickel ranked yet, so they're kind of, they're taking their time. They want to rack up a bunch of wins. They want us to see them a lot, you know. Let's see where we're at here. And you know what? I could share this with you. This is right off UFC's website. All right, so in middleweight, if they really wanted to test them, okay, so why didn't they put them against this guy? So at number 15 is... Kyle Baraljo. Now, I don't even know who that is, to be honest with you. I know who everybody else above him is, but I don't know who. It's spelled like Chow. Chow Barajo. I, we'll have to look him up sometime, but not now. We're going through our picks here. Number 14 is Chris Curtis. He could fight Paul Craig, Anthony Hernandez. And I know they're saving that Hamzat Shemaev one. Um, okay, yeah, man, the more I dig into these things, the more I can see other videos I can make. All right. So Bo Nickel, Cody Brundage. I, I feel like I don't even need to answer this. Bo Nickel is going to run through that boy hard and fast and nasty. That got weird. Charles Oliveira versus Armin Sarukian. I'm super excited about this one. Now, I know some of you are going to bitch at me in the comments over what I'm about to say. But I think Sarukian beat Islam Makachev in that fight. Let me know in the comments. If you agree with me or if you disagree with me, let me know. I want to know what you think. Armin was dominant throughout the more of the fight. And as far as points go, it's about even. I think Armin Sarukian won. So between Charles Oliveira and Armin Sarukian such a hard one to choose and they have charles Oliveira as an underdog a plus 170 underdog and armin at a 205 favorite so the betting cards think that armin's gonna win and i've seen armin surukian in my opinion beat islam makachev already and makachev beat charles Oliveira, but then styles make fights and then charles Oliveira maybe had an off day and can actually beat islam I don't know. Okay, I'm going to pick Charles Oliveira because I believe in him and I think he can do it, but I have a feeling Sarukian's going to win. I'm choosing Oliveira. 
I, I do have a suspicion Sorokin's going to win. All right. The next one is the BMF. Wow. Uh, wow. They got Justin Gaethje as a big favorite. He's a two, a minus 238 favorite against Max Holloway. Okay. Um, who do you guys pick on that one? I guess I'm going to go with Justin Gaethje. Because Max Holloway is a beast, but Justin Gaethje is a beast, and he has Trevor Whitman, which is like his like Professor X from X Men. You know, they're like this. He thinks it, he hears it. What I'm saying is they're like super in sync with each other. And then Trevor Whitman's a great strategist. Something about myself, I I think I've mentioned in previous videos, but in case you're new to the channel. Uh, I love playing chess. I've played chess my entire life. I don't remember a time in my life where I wasn't playing chess. Before I was even 10 years old, I was beating adults that had played chess their entire life. I'm good at chess, which means I'm good at strategy, which I've carried over in my professional life too. This is what makes me appreciate Trevor Whitman's impact on Justin Gaethje. He's such a good strategist. And when he started helping Gaethje and started coaching Gaethje, Gaethje was a wild man. He was just pure chaos. But Trevor Whitman used strategy to control that chaos and just like harness that energy and that power of Gaethje into like super smart strategy in fights, customized to whoever he's fighting. The first time we really caught a glimpse of that was J Gaethje versus Tony Ferguson. And you know what happened there. I don't have to tell you. If you haven't seen all the fights and you don't understand everybody I'm talking about, there's no judgment here. Like you'll see people calling people casuals. I think casuals are you're on the right start. You're you're noticing UFC. Join us. It's fun. It's awesome. So don't let anybody make you feel like a casual. That's just a derogatory word that these elitists that think they're better than everybody else use. Don't worry about the word casual. If you haven't seen Justin Gaethje versus Tony Ferguson, go watch it. And you'll know exactly what I'm talking about when I say Trevor Whitman stepped in, fine-tuned Justin Gaethje. And then when we saw that result with Justin Gaethje versus Tony Ferguson. Tony Ferguson was on like a 11 or 12 streak win. I believe he was like, he held a record for that too. I'm not exactly sure. That's what strategy can do. All right. So I'm going to pick Gaethje on that one. I think Gaethje is going to keep his BMF belt. And then I think that Mazdabal is going to come in there and then get beat up by Justin Gaethje too. That's what I think. We'll save that for another video. All right. The co-main. Zhang Weili versus Yan Chaonan. I think that's probably how you pronounce it. She's the number one contender and Weili is the champ. So this is a champ fight. I don't know a lot about Zhao Nan. I will have to research her, and they don't have the betting odds here, so I'm going to go with the champ, Whaley, and the main bet. We have Alex Pereira versus Jamal Hill, another champion versus number one contender. So for those of you who don't already know the story behind what's going on here and why this fight is special is because the light heavyweight title belonged to Jamal Hill, and he hurt his Achilles tendon during a basketball game. So he vacated the title, and then Alex Pereira fought for the vacant title and won. And now Jamal Hill has healed, and he feels he's ready to fight again, so this is his return. The cool thing about it is he was already the champion. He was not beat, and he was destroying people on his way up. He did have to take a year off, I believe, around a year, but he, he wasn't beat, and that's not how he lost his belt. He vacated it because he injured his Achilles tendon. So now he feels healthy. Now he feels ready. And he's going against Alex Pereira. Now, if you don't know who Alex Pereira is, he is a rival of Israel Adesanya. He used to be a kickboxer. Well, he's still a kickboxer. But he was a champion in kickboxing organizations. And he beat Izzy two times in kickboxing not in the UFC. Izzy came into the UFC and did great 
and became the cha- the middleweight champion. And Alex Pereira sees Izzy getting all this fame and glory and money. And he's like, wait a minute. I beat that guy twice. Maybe I'll go do MMA. And then the UFC learns that. And wait, this guy beat it, our champion twice? Okay, let's start trickling him into the situation. Alex came in and just started slaughtering people. He worked his way up to Izzy. And guess what happened? He beat him again. But now for the first time in MMA. And then Izzy fought him again. He played some possum and then came over with the right and knocked Alex Pereira out pretty nasty. They're three and one together with that. Izzy's still out for now. But we have Alex Pereira who just started slaughtering everybody. Like Strickland beat Izzy and then Alex Pereira knocked out Strickland. You know, this guy is... A savage. And he's super tactical. Super tactical. And he has a reputation of taking out your legs. Now, his weak point is his wrestling. He's not a wrestler. And that's where Jamal Hill, he could really get some work in on Pereira. You know? He could tire him down with just wrestling. He doesn't even have to submit him with wrestling. He could just tire him down with wrestling and Jamal Hill is no joke on the feet either. He's a great striker. I mean, has tons of knockouts. He's a knockout artist, and he has the power to do it. They both have the power to knock each other out. Pereira is arguably better than Hill on the feet. If I claimed he was better than him, people would argue with me. If I claimed that they're even, and I wouldn't be surprised if Hill was exactly the same on the feet as him, people would argue with me. No matter who I say is better on the feet between these two, people will argue with me. But in my honest opinion, I think they both have the chance of knocking each other out just because like Alex Pereira is tactical, but Jamal Hill is like very unorthodox. That can get confusing to people that are used to practicing a certain way, you know, and that's what this is. It's an art form. So they're practicing the art form. But when you have someone that's unorthodox and gets real creative like a Tony Ferguson, like Jamal Hill, things can happen. Magic can happen. I'm going with Jamal Hill. I think Jamal Hill is going to get it done. Unless his Achilles tendon is still compromised. That's the only thing I'm worried about. It's going to suck too if he loses and then it's like, yeah, you know, it was giving me a hard time. Like my Achilles tendon, I just, I felt like I couldn't move on it right. I've been good during training, but I just couldn't move on it right. I hope that's not a factor because Alex will definitely get it done. If Jamal Hill is compromised, even this much, if Hill is compromised this much, Pereira is going to win. If Hill is a hundred percent, I think he can get it done. I will be happy with either his champion. I love both fighters. That's another thing on this channel. I love all the fighters. I really do. I even like Colby Covington. I like all of them. The only one that I don't like, and I say I don't like him, but I wouldn't miss a fight of his, is Patty Pimblett. I think he's a human Muppet. He's the only one you'll ever hear me say anything crazy about. I don't hate on him, but I like making fun of him because he's a human Muppet. What can I say? Remember that big old head of hair? Like every time he gets punched, it's like, every time he's jumping around, his hair is jumping around with him too. Although he started doing the braid thing. And now the only thing I can make fun of him is his goofy voice. He sounds like Ringo Starr. Um, I don't know. It's hard to say, you know, they're a bit funny. The kids one day they, they go nuts and run after you. And then another day they, they don't bother. you know. If you like the content, subscribe, let me know who your picks are in the comments. If you have the time, let me know all your picks. But at the very least, let me know who, who you think is going to win between Pereira and Jamal Hill and Max Holloway and Justin Gaethje. Those are the two I'm really interested in hearing your opinions on. Subscribe. Love chatting with you guys and having these discussions. It's a fun time. And till next time. Yeah. Thank you for kicking in with MMA Flex and Chill. Chill. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe.